Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are having a CUBE conversation in the Palo Alto studios with a many time a CUBE guest. And actually it's kind of funny. Uh, if you look back through the history of our, of our conversations, they've slowly migrated from uh, our studio two versions ago yes. to one version ago. I'm really excited to welcome Noam Chandar, uh, new title, GM of cloud at Zadar Storage. Noam, great to see you. You too, Jeff, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, it's funny, because then we were at the little studio across the street, and now we're in our, so how do you like our new digs? Yes, I think I was the first one at the interim studio. Right, Everything right. Everything was still kind of in a jumble, but but up and running. Yes, well we never really got past the jumble stage. Yeah. Thankfully, <laughs> we, uh, this place came open and we moved across the street. So first off, great to see you as always, get an update. We were just at the Western Digital event last week, mm -hmm. talking about Mammer and Hammer, and, and really a lot of excitement about a new S-curve mm -hmm. in uh, hard drive media. Right. Love to get your take on it. You've obviously been in the business for a long time. They were really psyched. I know there's some detractors that are, eh, you know, <laughs> still spinning rust, but <laughs> it didn't seem to be the case when we were down there last week. Yeah, we're, we're super excited. It's, uh, it's high capacity magnetic drives. Our customers are crazy about it. I think it's obvious that by capacity, that's a majority of our business. And the reason is that customers need affordable storage and we can provide the high capabilities, the full featured and even performance and caching and so forth around magnetic storage. We're agnostic in the sense that customers can choose SSDs and or magnetic drives, but the bigger the drives, the lower the cost per gigabyte, and our customers love that. We see extreme elasticity with regard to price. Yeah, that's interesting. The big one of their big themes was kind of fast data versus they call it big data, but mm -hmm. really more kind of archival data mm -hmm. or data in rest versus data in motion. And and the two of them together, leveraging both the technology, seems to be the right way to go. Yeah, absolutely. And and customers understand that data is mixed. There 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 are some data sets that are purely low performance, let's call it let's call it archival or cold. Some data is really hot all the time, but most of the data is in between. It it is large, it's big data, but it has parts that are hot and parts that are cold. And there's no better solution for that from performance and price perspective than a magnetic let's call it uh, magnetic uh, background storage with a cache, an SSD based cache in the foreground. In the front. So let's get an update on what's going on with Cesar. Just a quick uh, glance of the news before he came in. I mm -hmm. see you guys are getting all kinds of award, a Red Herring Top 100 award. Mm -hmm. Looks like Oksana got the CRN Woman in Channel Award. So a lot of great awards and good things going on. But unfortunately, we were talking about off camera, there's a bunch of bad stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Just this, mm -hmm. this never ending crash of waves of Houston, then Florida, then Puerto Rico, and then unfortunately here, mm -hmm. Northern California, I guess there's new ones you said coming in in Santa Cruz, the yes. fire. So it was great to see that you guys are trying to figure out what can we do to help. Yeah, yeah, and it's we keep, we're not insulated from the rest of the world, and, right. and so we work and we watch the news and, and we talk among ourselves. And, and we, at first we thought that we were helpless, uh, that there's nothing we could do to help. We, and, and then the idea came, well wait a second, we, we provide storage services that are very easy and quick to bring up, and somebody, a company that lost its storage probably needs to bring storage up quickly. And one of the challenges, of course, is they're probably hurting financially because the business is not running, especially if the data is gone. And also, even if they're insured, there's a whole process around that, plus everything else. We fix the offices and, right. and restore electricity and so on and so forth. And we said, wait a second, let's just do this for them now, we can help now, and then a few months later, then they can decide what their permanent solution is. So, so we said, hey, it's in our power to help, let's do it. So we're offering to any business that, that has been affected by any of these hurricanes, storage to replace whatever they had before, um, up to a petabyte, at no cost, no commitment, nothing. We'll tell us, show us what you had before, tell us where you need it, we'll send you the new storage our, at, our, at our expense. Right. Six months later, we'll call you and say, may, may we have it back, you, and no questions asked, we'll take it back. So when did so when did you announce this, and are people starting to take advantage of it? We, so we've j actually just announced this, and, and we're trying to get the word out. Right? And, and we one of our challenges that the is that the these businesses are very very busy with all things having to do with recovery. Right. So they may not be able to hear what we're saying. Right. So we're trying different ways to get the word out. Um, so it's so it's just trickling in now. Right. And, and we and to be honest, we haven't cracked the formula yet on how to do this. And maybe maybe we need to talk to FEMA. I don't know. But we've right, right now we've used the commercial channels to get the word out. Well, it's very generous and uh, and super. You know, to to be able to help somehow. And like you said, unfortunately, storage is probably not at the top of everybody's right. list when your house is burned down and your business is burned down and et cetera. But but good for you guys for, for taking a proactive step. Thanks. So let's talk about how the business is evolving. Um, 
you know, we've got this big show coming up uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> right after Thanksgiving called right. AWS Cloud mm -hmm. or AWS reInvent. Mm -hmm. AWS just continues to march forward at a really fast pace mm -hmm. with Google Cloud and Azure uh, not far behind. Mm -hmm. So public cloud is still booming. Mm -hmm. How are you kind of seeing market evolution, market, is there, or is it just kind of more the same at an increasing rate on the public cloud side? Uh, it's it, it's still where innovation happens, and and there's a reason why AWS reInvent gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. It's it's I'll tell you an anecdote. When we formed Zadara in 2011, we were going to put the word cloud in the name of the company. Uh, it's at you know and I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of cloud something so yeah, in so, that kind of era. Exactly. So it was um, you know cloud age was one of the. One of the suggestions, because our, our predecessor company goes storage, uh, but we decided not to use the word cloud at all. And the reason is that we realized that if you wait long enough, cloud just becomes how IT is done. So it, the word will become meaningless because IT will be cloud, cloud will be IT. So, so we decided let's not even use the word because the word will become obsolete right. soon enough. So we're, we're seeing this happening. It's becoming a default way of doing business. Definitely the OPEX way of doing business, something we've talked about multiple times. Um, f for us, it's the majority of our business. We have we, so we have two businesses, a public cloud business and an on-prem business. And the public cloud business is, is larger. It's maybe uh, either 60-40 or 55-45 okay. split. So both nice and big businesses, um, but we see things changing more quickly in, in the public cloud. Why? Because they can't change more quickly, because everything is elastic and everything is flexible, right. and companies can innovate faster and experiment more, and route find their their optimal solution more effectively. Whereas where they own their own equipment, then they're hobbled by by the the blessing and the curse of ownership. Right. And the other thing you mentioned off off air is that that's where the, you know the real uh, rabbits are, the real high growth mm -hmm. companies that you guys are seeing um, because their business is growing so fast in that infrastructure, mm -hmm. and you guys basically get a piggyback along for the ride. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The. I, <clears throat> The, the, fu the fun statistics to mention are those companies, there are multiple of them, that are spending with us 50 times more now than they were when they started, per month. That's, that's amazing. And, this, and we're not doing 50 times the amount of work, right? right. So right. They're, they're happier because whatever, whatever they were doing, they wanted to do more of, and they get to do it at the push of a button. We're happy because we're, we're, we're seeing more revenue, also we're adding more value. Um, and, and at the same time, it's neither one of, of us is resting on our laurels. We have to re-earn the business every day because any day that customer can say, I'm, I'm terminating, you know, I found a better way to do it. So, right. we have, so we have to make sure to keep them happy every day. And then they're happy because they have sort of insurance or future proofing. They're not stuck with us. Right. They, if, right. they, if they need to tack left, they can tack left. It's interesting, we did the Zora subscribe show mm -hmm. and um, you know, kind of the attitude that you have to take with a customer when they're paying you every month mm -hmm. versus paying you once and then collecting a maintenance fee is you have this ongoing relationship and you have to continue to keep delivering value because they're getting that, mm -hmm. that bill every single month. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure they're not only happy with the mm -hmm. service, but you're over delivering and mm -hmm. innovating and continuing to provide more for that dollar. So it really right. creates a tighter relationship Absolutely. with your customer. You, you got it. And and the really strategic customers understand that and they, they take advantage of it in a positive way and they put a premium on the agility. And an example is one of these 50X customers got quite big, as you can, you can guess, and we decided, hey, we should probably get this customer on a longer term contract because it would be kind of painful if they call us tomorrow morning and cancel. Right. So we went to them and said, thank you for your business, uh, as a reward for your business and to introduce some stability, we'd like to offer you a discount, a significant discount for a 12 month commitment. And they said no, we'd rather pay list and have the freedom to change. And we thought, that's amazing. This is, this is, <laughs> that's a, this is a whole new world. Right, it, where, right. Where the, what you pay for is flexibility. Right, right. And then on the private cloud side, um, and what's interesting is, is, is we've got a concept here with Wikibon, kind of the true private cloud, is they mm -hmm. want to have that same flexibility mm -hmm. and that same agility, right. but just not necessarily have the data at Amazon or at Microsoft or at Google, right. but still have all those, those uh, capabilities and flexibilities mm -hmm. to execute in a cloud-based manner. As you said, it's just the way business is done. It's That's not right. even really a place. Right, so we, yeah, we, have, we have a car manufacturer, you know, top 
very small number car manufacturer, and they are worried about industrial espionage. So they their design data cannot be in anywhere that's network connected. So it can't live in the cloud by definition. So we provide them storage as a service on their premises in an air gap network, a network that has no connection to the internet whatsoever. And then we have a, a mechanism with them where we do billing offline. So they, they expose to us their usage in a way that's, that we consider trusted and then we build them accordingly. But we cannot access the system remotely, nor, nor can anyone else. So that, that's one example. Uh, another interesting thing is that because we offer our own hardware at Amazon and Google and um, in Microsoft Azure, we can actually provide the paradox of how do I use how do I run an application at AWS, let's say, without exposing my data to AWS? Because imagine that you're a competitor of AWS. Um, you want to use them because they have capabilities that, that they have, uh, but per your corporate risk guidelines, AWS is a competitor. I mean, Amazon, the parent right, company, right, is, a, is right. a competitor. You can't actually do that. Well, we, we solve that problem because when you use us at AWS, you're not storing the data at AWS, you're storing on us. We're connected to AWS via private high-speed fiber with very, very low latency. So your experience is um, a local experience. We look like local storage, but from a data governance standpoint, it's not at AWS. And in fact, not only is it not at AWS, it's on your own dedicated drives, be they the big magnetic drives we talked about or SSDs. Right, right. So if you need to have these drives for any reason, you can have them. We will sell you the physical drives that contain your data. You right. want to crush them with a steamroller? Go, go ahead. So is that like the dir the direct connect concept, or, or yes. are you in the physical? Are you at their physical building? I, I always used to to laugh. <laughs> what does direct connect mean? You know, how close is it across the street? It, it's really across close. the building. You know, across uh, the aisleway in the data center, or across a plane of steel in a in a box. You know, kind of how right. close is close on the same board, but down a little ways. It's uh, it, so it, they, they won't exactly tell you because they're secretive about right. where where right. their actual servers uh, live, but. We, we can test the latency and, and draw conclusions. Um, it's, it's, it ranges from the next building over uh, to the same building. Uh, you don't know, you're, ju you're just told terminate your fiber here and we will connect, connect right. it the rest right. of the way. Uh, and you don't know where the rest of the way is. But yeah, it's, it, it, another way of putting it is it goes from one to two milliseconds and that's it. So that's, it's ba you know, it's basically inside the data center or, or the next building. Very, very close. So, um, we keep picking on AWS because the show's coming out. I, I hear it's going to be 45,000 plus people, it's bananas. One of the things when you watch Andy speak, uh, Andy Jassy, mm -hmm. it's just this continuous innovation. It's funny, I saw him speak in San Francisco earlier this year, and S3 mm -hmm. and EC2 was like this itty bitty little corner of this giant slide mm -hmm. that had a ton of love, yes. you know, this, this constant mm -hmm. pace of innovation. As you look forward, you know, and, it, and it's a different kind of attack than looking for these big giant gains, right? Mm -hmm. They're just they just are constantly moving. What are some of the things you're looking for as we turn the, the calendar on, on twenty ending twenty seventeen, looking forward to twenty eighteen mm -hmm. at Sadara? Is it just continue to make incremental change? Is there any big, big uh, things out there that you're looking at, or big goals you're trying to achieve, or just keep doing what you're doing and do it better? So the first big picture strategy is uh, at, at AWS. The <coughs> we. We provide premium storage. Uh, the, if you think of AWS's engineering effort on storage or any of these many, many, many other services is they have an audience of one million customers plus right. to serve. They need to develop things to serve that audience. It's hard to justify the development for the elite sub, sub, sub section, but that's our target market. So if, if, if the pyramid, base of the pyramid is a million customers, we're, we're focusing at the top 1,000 customers. And, and our business model is all around those 1,000 customers. So we can afford to invest in pleasing those customers at AWS while AWS invests in the million customers, and at the end of the day, everybody's happy because right, right. we complete the list of critical features for AWS, which means AWS can attract customers that they otherwise would not be able to attract, or to be more precise, attract those applications from those elite customers that the customer didn't think they could move into AWS. Um, just like the story you just told in terms of the separation of the data. And the precisely, right, precisely. Right. That's that company is a Fortune 10 company, so they you know they are very very demanding, and we have other <coughs> other stories like that. Um, so from a strategy perspective, is keep adding value to AWS customers 
above AWS's own very aggressive roadmap. They're developing, they're releasing new features, and over time those features overlap with what we do, but that's okay. We, we, you know, if that's a slope up, ours is a slope up too, that's higher, right. higher than, than the AWS slope. So that, that's overall strategy. In, in furtherance of that, we, we do plan some, uh, at least one big announcement for 2018. It'll be our third generation architecture. Um, I won't spoil any of it, but it is um, uh, designed from the ground up. Um, it's, it's quite exciting. It has uh, some of the latest technologies that are flying around as buzzwords, and I can tell you they're way more than buzzwords. They work, they're, they're, it's, it's just really cool stuff. Uh, our engineers are having a lot of fun with it, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay, well I can tell by your face yes. that, you're, uh, that you're excited. I know, I'm just, They're probably been working I'm really, tickled. really hard. <laughs> All right, well Noam, always great to, uh, to catch up. Welcome Likewise. to our to our new studio, Beautiful. and uh, I guess we'll see you at, in, in Vegas, if not before. I will be there, I can't wait. Absolutely, all right, he's Noam Shandar, I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE from our Palo Alto studios, thanks for watching.